Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about something completely different, but then a few of my subscribers were asking about my nose and they wanted me to do a rhinoplasty video. So I decided that I'm gonna to listen to you guys and do that rhinoplasty video. So for those of you who haven't been to this channel before, my name is Lori Hill and I do beauty and fashion and plastic surgery videos. Please subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thank you guys so much for coming back to this channel. I appreciate all of you guys. Let's get started. When I was 21 years old, I hated my nose. It was bulbous. It had a hump on the side. I was just completely obsessed with its size, with the way it didn't fit my face. I hated everything about it. especially being like a young adult and just not feeling comfortable in your own body and that's exactly how I felt. I wanted to get my nose fixed at all costs. So I saved up a bunch of money and I went and saw a surgeon in my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada and um, he agreed to do my nose and he also generously charged my insurance. And when I say generously, I mean I was double charged. He charged my insurance and he charged me for the aesthetic part of the nose job. When I came out of surgery, I noticed right away that the cast on my nose looked crooked. Usually this is a dead giveaway that a nose job is not gonna turn out how you expected it. So lo and behold, when the cast did come off, my nose looked swollen and it looked a little bit better, but still not the nose that I thought I would have. As the weeks went by and I started healing and the nose started going from swollen to more defined, I noticed that I literally still had that hump on top right here. And I also still had a very bulbous tip. Now this wasn't just me being picky. Nobody really noticed that I had even gotten my nose done. It was like nothing had really happened. I wasn't devastated, but I didn't feel like that beautiful unveiling moment that a lot of people get. I looked pretty much the same as before, maybe just a bit of a small change, uh, smaller tip slightly, but still crooked and still a hump on the bridge. About a year went by and I went to see that same doctor again. Big mistake. I told him my concerns. I told him that I still had a hump and that my nose still looked pretty much the same. And he said, ah, don't worry about it. I'm gonna redo it. And so I went back under anesthesia, back under the knife. I believe my insurance got charged again and I believe I paid a surgery fee. And what I came out with was horrific. Now when I say horrific, I mean it looked like the doctor had taken all structure out of my nose, like he had removed all of the cartilage, and my nose now looked like this shapeless distortion of what a nose should look like. And it had no form, no definition, and it was extremely skinny. I looked like a plastic surgery victim, and that's exactly what I was. And the worst part about it was the way that people treated me and the assumptions that they made. When they would talk to me, even random people who barely knew me, sometimes they would bring up my nose in a conversation that wasn't even about my nose. Oh, so, um, yeah, you know, I was thinking about getting my nose done, just the way they brought up my nose really let me know that it was such an obvious defect in my face. And I was pursuing acting at the time, and I remember that I did a play. This casting agent who had been at this play um, referred me to an acting agent that was in town. And the acting agent not only refused to represent me, but also felt the need to tell this casting director that she's great, she's talented, but her nose, like, ooh, her nose, what happened there? I was devastated yet again. One of the worst things about the whole experience is the assumption that people placed on me that I must be really into my looks because of how obvious my nose job looked. And nothing could be further from the truth. Not only had I just wanted to look normal with my nose, I wasn't trying to look beautiful and I wasn't trying to do surgeries that would beautify me. I just wanted to fit in. I wanted my nose to look normal. 
I didn't even want it to look perfect. I just wanted it to not be such an obvious glaring imperfection on my face. And the dreaded thing happened to me that I think happens to a lot of people who get bad surgery. And that dreaded thing is to be labeled with BDD, which stands for body dysmorphic disorder. It was a never ending cycle of shame, self blame, and then being judged by others. I think I went through about four years of not wanting to really go out in public too much of not wanting to put myself out there, of feeling inferior and, and just ugly, even amongst my friends. I never felt like I was good enough and I never felt pretty ever. Something needed to be done and I was too scared to do it. When I was 24, I decided that enough was enough. I was gonna go and seek help and see if yet another surgeon could help me with my deformity that was now on my face. And when I say deformity, it really was a deformity. Um, because I had very little cartilage left in my nose, I was starting to get an indentation right here and right here. The cartilage that was had been scooped out of both nostrils was now starting to show an indent where it was missing in those areas. Okay, you guys, so let me catch you up. I'm now 24 years old and I'm going to see a second rhinoplasty doctor. Now, I found this doctor because I went to a general plastic surgeon in Los Angeles, California, and this general plastic surgeon said, I cannot do your nose. Like, he was completely freaked out even. And this is probably a surgeon who's seen a lot of cases, but he said what I had going on needed extra attention. It was the type of nose that needed a rhinoplasty specialist. He said, I know someone in Newport Beach and he's um, he's very good with noses, but I gotta tell you, I'm not sure he could do anything about yours. And the way he said it, it just broke my heart. I remember um, almost crying at the appointment because I felt so hopeless. Like, I felt like I had done something to my face um, that had lasting repercussions and that I was going to feel ugly the rest of my life. I didn't feel entitled to be beautiful. I didn't feel entitled to be the center of attention. But what I was feeling was like I was at least entitled to look normal. And at that point, I did not look normal. It was the worst feeling to get up the courage to go to somebody after years of hating what was done to you and then for them to tell you not to get your hopes up. So I went to Newport Beach and I had a consultation with a revision rhinoplasty doctor there. The first doctor that referred me to this revision specialist was correct. When this doctor saw my nose, he told me that yes, he could improve my nose. Um, he could make it look better, but it was never going to look great, but that he could do the best that he possibly can. Because my first rhinoplasty surgeon removed so much of my cartilage, there was really not much cartilage to work with. So this doctor told me that he would need to take cartilage from both of my ears and he would also need to take cartilage from my scalp. Um, it wasn't actually cartilage he was taking from my scalp. Now that I think about it, he was going to remove fascia. He told me that this was going to be a significant surgery and I would be under probably about four hours. And the cost for this surgery, I believe at the time, was about 12 grand. Um, and so this was an enormous amount, especially because I was still pretty young. I was just starting out. I was, you know, I was working a regular job. Um, this was a huge ordeal for me to get the money for. Well, I get done with surgery and I come out and my nose has been reshaped. Now my nose, instead of being scooped out and very thin, is now very thick, very bulbous. I remember thinking that the thickness of this area had uh, drastically increased.
it was a bit shocking at first, but on the other hand, I had had a scooped out thin nose for so long that I just hated that look so much. Was it an attractive nose? No, not really. Um, did it call attention to itself? No, it didn't. I was really grateful for this change. I felt like I could get back on with my life and my nose wasn't gonna to be too much of an issue. He also did reassure me that after the swelling went down that my nose would look more defined. Actually, my nose really never looked more defined. It always looked kind of um, thick and pretty much shapeless, but not as bad as my first nose. As time went on, I noticed that it almost looked like my nose was shrinking and in fact, it was shrinking. My nose now looked like um, it was going back to being its scooped out thin self. So I went back to see the doctor and we did yet another surgery where he took even more of the cartilage in my ears to where there was nothing really left. It still looked like an ear, but now even today when you bump my ears, it hurts a lot because there's just not that cartilage to protect it. And he took even more fascia um, and, and put it in my nose. With that fourth surgery, I was done for a very long time and I prayed that that would last and that my body wouldn't digest what he had just put in. Here we go, here we go again Trying hard but you wanna be my friend Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to here we go, here we go again